your greatest crisis. Every person who has ever lived and every person who ever will live has a crisis of the highest magnitude. It is a crisis which transcends finances, health, comfort, and love and marriage and any other matter. It is a crisis that can end up as our greatest blessing or can end up as our greatest curse. We were created by a holy God who by his very nature is infinitely important, perfectly good, all-powerful, possessing authority of the highest magnitude, and who made man in his image with an, with an, an implied accountability therein, which is inescapable. He has appointed a day in which he will judge all people in righteousness and without respect of persons through his son, Jesus Christ. He is a consuming fire, and our responses to him in this life will be tried in the light of his blazing holiness, down to the smallest details which we could possibly be aware of, even our most secret thoughts and intentions. Hebrews 9.27 And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this a judgment. Luke chapter 12, verses 2-5 to five, For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not be known. Therefore, whatsoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light, and that which ye have spoken in the ear and closets shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yes, I say unto you, fear him. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 to 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is a whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. God's Son, Jesus Christ, has given himself for our sins on the cross, that he might redeem us from this present evil world with its corruption and ungodliness. His truth and righteous authority will be vindicated in us, whatever we do with his grace. However, his grace prevailing in us and being demonstrated in us is a special victory and one which we cannot afford to not obtain. Ultimately, God seeks to redeem a special holy people to himself through Jesus Christ. We are in a crisis regarding whether or not we will be a part of that people, and our influence in responding to the Lord surely is significant enough to, to affect others who are in this crisis, as of course all are. And there are many other related implications um, which, are, which the Day of Judgment itself will reveal in relation to our response in this crisis. Consider a beautiful and or wealthy person, or perhaps a happy, healthy young couple, which you may be tempted to envy. Such are in the same conflict as you, under the same trial, with the same basic hope and danger set before them. Or consider that person whom you consider miserable, may be alone in poverty, in poor health, or all of these. He or she may seem to be the polar opposite in happiness compared to those you may be tempted to envy. Yet how well off those on both sides of the spectrum really are has nothing to do with any of these things. And that is because ultimately how they respond to God in their circumstances and whether they use their circumstances faithfully in his eyes is truly all that will ever, is truly all that will ever matter about them soon enough. We would have been tempted to conclude that the rich man was much better off than Lazarus had we seen them both when they were alive, but not so after they both had died. See Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31, if you are not intimately familiar with the story of the rich man Lazarus, which Jesus told. It is not too uncommon for someone to acknowledge that this life is a preparation for the next life, and that the things of earth will pass away. But if we actually consider that truth to be trite, um, common, something boring to say, we really still have a vision problem, and our belief in God's word is at best unstable and, in, and inadequate. Jesus, Jesus is really going to return. You and I are really going to stand before the great God who made the universe and be recompensed by him according to our works. Our works will prove whether we have really um, turned to him and, 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 come into, to, and come into alignment with his righteous, with his our works will prove whether we have really turned to him and come into alignment with his righteous ways. Christ's boy will atone for these and wash away their sins. Those who really believe in him as the great righteous ruler and deliverer that he is, 
and his blood will not atone for anyone else. Our accountability to God implies that life is a test wherein he examines our choices in the light of his word, and thereby also examines our gratitude for the opportunity which he has provided through Jesus Christ to be reconciled with him and, and justified in his sight. Whether you are rich or poor, whether you are strong or crippled, whatever your marriage state is, or whatever your lot is in anything else pertaining to this life, does not make you better or worse off in, in the biggest issue for you. For none of these things relieve you from the trial which you are under and the court date which you have with the Almighty God. If you are happy, comfortable, and feel blessed, you still have this crisis to deal with. And if you are, over, if you are overwhelmed with grief, uncomfortable, and or feel anything but blessed for whatever reason, you yet have a bigger crisis to deal with. And that is the very same crisis which the people that seem the opposite of you right now have. There is truly no partiality with God, nor any discharge from the ultimate trial which he has placed upon each and every man and woman. Even Jesus in his incarnation and humility was under trial from his father and never let that slip from being his primary concern to attend to. If we're going to faithfully follow him and inherit salvation through him, we need to squarely fix this before our eyes also and learn not to let them look away from this incredible and weighty reality of our existence, which will never cease to be reality on this side of judgment day and eternity. In Hebrews chapter 5, verses 7 to 9, we read of Jesus, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications, with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. When Jesus said in Matthew 6, in Matthew chapter 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That is a command, but there's also a judgment or a verdict there about what man's greatest crisis is. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Nothing else could possibly be that important. Be sure you obtain that, even if you should lose in everything else. Along the same lines we are told in James chapter 1, verses 12 to 15, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Shortly afterwards, we read in James 1.27, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Um, that is surely an elaboration of the faithful enduring of temptation, and not rather succumbing to sin, that was spoken of earlier in the same chapter. And of course, all of this encompasses all of the instruction in God's word. Hence, Jesus said in Matthew 4.4, 4, Man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And by the way, it is only right that I inform you that we have a terrible um, crisis of needy people right now who are in great affliction in the Horn of Africa, who really need help. A horrible drought has left many without food or water. It was generally a very poor area already, and now it is exceedingly worse. Uh, Jimmy, the man whose channel this audio recording is being posted on, oversees and works with a missionary in northern Kenya, uh, William, who is in this area has greatly been affected by this drought. So these residents who were already poor and are already um, a lot worse off because of this drought and in great need themselves, they've also had a large group of people from Ethiopia, um, people who are even in greater need, come, come down to where they are just to find something in terms of food and water, just to stay alive. So a refugee camp has sprung up outside of Williams community where there are hundreds, perhaps over a thousand people by now whose lives are hanging in the balance. People have died already of starvation there right in this past week, right in this refugee camp. William is doing all he can with what he is being provided, um, but a lot more is needed. Everything and anything he has sent makes a difference for the poorest of the poor. 
and even has the real potential to save lives. The situation is that bad. Though obviously being a faithful Christian, walking by faith before God involves much besides helping those in need. It surely necessarily involves it. Jimmy himself has done a teaching called The Biblical Commands on Serving the Poor, which can be found whatever channel, whatever media you're accessing this on. That teaching can be found through the, the same channel there. Um, we sure can't be faithful Christians who live acceptably before God if we don't consider how to use our abundance to help the poor, and if we don't minister to the needs of those in distress which come to our knowledge. This is a dire need and a real opportunity to help where help is greatly needed. So if you go to Global Mission for Children, just like it's spelled, just all one word, Global Mission for Children, four words in the one word, globalmissionforchildren.org, you can learn more about it and give there if you choose to. Um, Jimmy, the leader of the mission, is pouring his own money into this and the other mission fields he oversees. He has committed to giving much himself on a regular basis he gives even more money to make up the lack when donations run short. And he gives even yet more when circumstances like this drought and other things like medical emergencies require more. Um, so overseeing, helping, and being involved in this is really costing him and not profiting him at all. Uh, Jimmy is taking zero for himself. He is sending what he gets straight to those ministering at ground zero. If only we would consider meeting God on Judgment Day constantly. And in light of that, strive continually to come in the line with him and do right before him. It would help us to bring our view of our circumstances in life into their proper perspective. If we take the heart and don't withdraw from the consideration that God created and sustains this vast universe by his omnipotence, and that mountains and islands will flee from before his face, and yet we cannot be discharged from standing before him on our court date with him, and then choices and deeds which are unrighteous and ungodly before him should logically be exposed. Indeed, everything then that is contrary to the righteous manner of life prescribed by the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ would logically be cast away as the devastating, detrimental, and lethal things that they are. And God's true grace, which many vilify by calling things like bondage and legalism, many vilify God's true grace by calling it things like bondage and legalism with um, Judgment Day and Eternity before our eyes will logically be brought to light is truly amazing and more than valuable, more than valuable enough to cling to continually for dear life. Titus chapter 2 verses 11 to 14. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity, all lawlessness, sin is the transgression of God's law, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Deuteronomy 13, 4, Ye shall walk after the Lord your God, and fear him, and keep his commandments, and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him, and cleave unto him. Deuteronomy 13, 17 to 18, 13, 17, and 18. And there shall cleave not or nothing of the cursed thing to thine hand, that the Lord may turn from the fierceness of his anger and show thee mercy and have compassion upon thee and multiply thee as he has sworn unto thy fathers, when thou shalt hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep all his commandments which I command thee this day, to do that which is right in the eyes of the Lord thy God. The multiplication aspect of this was specifically for Israel for Israel as a nation under the Old Covenant. But the principles here for being in God's favor, being right with him are eternal and timeless principles extending into the Christian era, proven by how the apostles illustrated salvation by grace through faith, um, from principles established in the Old Testament and from people in the Old Testament. Revelation chapter 6, verses 12 to 17. Right before... Christ returns in the day of judgment, this is speaking of. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her on timely leaves, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men 
and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb for the great day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand 